Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome back to FAIR TV. 60 Minutes used to be known as the place to go to see hard-hitting investigative journalism. But nowadays, it's more known for something else, something that looks like this. Do you know the name of the director of the FBI? Probably not. James Comey has been America's top cop for just one year, and he hasn't done a major television interview until tonight. Now, if that setup sounded familiar, that's probably because it was. A few months ago, 60 Minutes had an exclusive with a top CIA official, who also didn't do many TV interviews. And then there was the show's long piece on the NSA. What do all these segments have in common? All of them were softball reports about powerful government agencies. In the most recent case, we get to go places the FBI doesn't normally allow TV cameras. We hear that the director is really committed to fighting cybercrime and terrorism. Now, there are plenty of critical things you could ask the director of the FBI about. The ACLU has a handy list, from cracking down on whistleblowers to abuses of the Patriot Act. But CBS didn't cover any of that, and it doesn't sound like they're going to in their follow-up. Our conversation with FBI Director James Comey continues here next week when we ask whether the FBI is snooping on average Americans and why he thinks Apple's new iPhone software could be a threat to national security. Now, sometimes media outlets do challenge spin coming from political leaders, or at least that's what they say they're going to do. That was the case on NPR's Morning Edition on October 8th when host Steve Inskeep decided that some things Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said to him deserved another look. The subject was the expansion of Israel's illegal settlements in the West Bank, which, to Netanyahu, aren't even settlements at all. These are not settlements. These are neighborhoods in Jerusalem. As host Inskeep explained, it matters a lot to Israelis and Palestinians alike just what things are called. Well, sure, words matter, but so should reality. Colonizing territory captured in war is against international law, which is why the world considers those settlements illegal. Unfortunately, NPR's only guest on this topic was Israeli historian and newspaper columnist Ari Shavit, and he basically endorsed Netanyahu's rhetoric. Settlements are neighborhoods, and, you know, by the way, Palestinians use troubling language, too. Inskeep mentioned near the top of this segment that this was just one perspective on the political wording in the Mideast. If that means they'll be airing other perspectives on Morning Edition, let's hope they can feature some guests who might actually challenge Netanyahu's spin. And finally, more on perception and reality. Here's PBS asking Republican Representative Paul Ryan about efforts to expand his party's reach. How hard is that to do when many, certainly Democrats, some independents, see the Republican Party as a party that has at least in the past been perceived as, as uh, against doing uh, programs for the poor, against uh, expanding Medicaid, uh, health benefits, did you follow that? Many people, especially those in opposing political parties, see the GOP as having been perceived, at least in the past, as against programs for the poor and the expansion of Medicaid benefits. But these aren't perceptions held by Ryan's opponents about the past. They're facts observed by anyone who observes facts about the Republican Party today. But elite media are too often concerned with partisan perception management. This Washington Post story opened by laying out good news about the economy, but there's a catch. President Obama and other Democrats are struggling to convince voters ahead of the midterm election that they deserve credit for the rebound. Okay. But then the very same article, just a few paragraphs later, lays out Barack Obama's problem in trying to claim credit. But complicating his message are stagnant wage growth, lost wealth, and the stubbornly high number of long-term unemployed, statistics that Republicans have been quick to note. So maybe it's a struggle to convince people who lost wealth, wages, and jobs that they're on solid ground because they're not. In both of these cases, reality doesn't seem that hard to grasp. Unfortunately, journalists are the ones who are fogging things up. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.